click, click. I'm out of ammo. Hickok 45 here, dual wielding. One of my favorite types of firearms. Look at that big 45 Colt single actions. Does it get any better? Not a lot if you've got some cowboy in you. Let's take them over here and see what we have. Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, uh, what a pleasure to be able to shoot two kind of at once, right? Man, those are nice. Yeah, what we're going to do is talk about the difference, as you can tell, between a less expensive, we won't say cheap, uh, single action revolver and a expensive single action revolver or two. We've got a couple of expensive ones, okay? Those two, the Colt and the Standard Manufacturing, they do approach $2,000 or, or more, depending on whether you have uh, maybe custom grips or you know, things like that. So you're talking in the ballpark anyway of a couple thousand on a Uberti, Cimarron, Taylors, you name it. They're mostly made by Uberti. The Italian uh, Colt clones, they're generally running around 450, 500. So for a round number, 500, okay? But uh, it just depends. They can be a little less, a little more. So a lot of people ask about that, and it's a common question on the internet. I've seen it. Uh, what do you get for 500? <laughs> uh, that, and what do you get mainly for 2,000 or 1,500 or 2,000? That's so much better than what you get for four or $500. So I thought we'd address that. I don't have all the answers, even though I've owned uh, several of both. So I can kind of give you my impressions. Uh, you share your impressions. I've seen a lot of input on the internet, on the forums about it. A lot of people have opinions and have had experience with both, just like I have. And some of you have had more experience with specific, you know, firearms than I have. Uh, you know, or both firearms, the Colts and also the, the Ubertis and everything. So let, it, let us know what you think, because this is a common question. And maybe this video can provide, maybe I can provide a little bit of insight then you all can provide a lot more, you know, just in the comments section with, with, with real experiences that, that you have had or people you know have had and provided, especially if you don't work for you birdie or Colt or <laughs> standard manufacturing or somebody, okay, you, uh, try to be objective about it. That's what I always try to be. So anyway, but, uh, and, and so watch for that. Uh, been shooting it. It, yep, shoots fine. And we're going to shoot a little bit more today. Just shot, slung some lead right there with it. So, uh, you know, that's a Cimarron, seven and a half inch, and that's 1873. It's a pretty nice revolver. So, uh, one that, you know, a lot of people will be proud to own, including myself. It's, it's pretty nice. We're going to talk about the positives and negatives of that. And what we got here is the uh, standard manufacturing you've probably already seen in that video. Uh, they have launched into making single actions and, uh, whew, Doing a nice job, nice job. And then, of course, uh, my Colt, uh, Davy Colt, third generation, have had just a year or so. Uh, so those two are kind of in you know, a, the same category in uh, $2,000 guns, right? Here, maybe. Uh, all right, so try to give you a little uh, insight, maybe, and at least my perspective on what do you get in a pistol like this one? Uh, I do call them pistols sometimes, you know, because back in the day, you know, they would refer to these as pistols. You know, uh, Wild Bill Hickok, one of my heroes, was known as the Pistolier, Prince of Pistoliers, you know. Uh, but uh, they're revolvers, I guess. Uh, what do you get with that for 500 bucks? And I'm using round numbers, I know. Well, you get a pretty darn good pistol. Many of you have had uh, Uberties, you've had Cimarron's, uh, Taylor's, and there's even confusion about how all that works. Uh, there's different companies over there in Italy. Uberti makes a ton of them. I think they make by far most of them. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then Cimarron and Taylors and company, you know, they, they buy them from them and they may uh, have specific uh, requirements that they want. I, I think, I think it's kind of like Walmart or other big box stores even, might say, hey, look, uh, Uberti, we want to buy 10,000 know, of these these uh, Colt clones basically and we want certain kind of grip on them and certain kind of finish or whatever or we want your very best uh, grade or whatever it might be or we want a certain grade of color case hardening maybe I don't know maybe you know more about that but they, they do make specifications of what they want and then they negotiate for the price of course all right and uh, so really a, a 
Taylor and Companies or a Cimarron and some of the others, they're they're U Birdy revolvers, best I know. Okay, uh, but their name and they package them and there's a Cimarron box over there. You know, uh, they package them as a Cimarron revolver. Okay, made they're made by U Birdy though I think. Um, so there are some variance in quality. You know, I think some of these companies can they want only the best maybe and I don't know there's all kinds of myths about that and, and opinions about it Cimarron seems to to get some of the best ones I think uh, what's your opinion on that I think most people seem to feel that Cimarron might be just a slight notch above what Taylor's and Company gets I don't know it may just depend on the specific model too there's just not much difference okay so Back to my question. Okay, here's the two, both of these roughly 2,000, let's say, you know, give or take a few hundred. Uh, why are they cost, why are they so expensive? This gun here shoots just fine. Look at this, watch me load it up again. For 500 bucks, the John Wayne load, it's not really the John Wayne load, it's the old West load. It's what people who didn't want to blow their toes off did, unless they were ready to shoot. Okay, uh, let me just shoot a couple things with it. Okay, it, it, it's got to be junk. I mean, it costs like one fourth of what the others do. Ooh, how'd you like that Kentucky math? Oh, well, I tried to attack. Yeah, it'll even smoke pot. Even uh, if you win a Kentucky two liter, smoke more pot. Oop, I went high. Okay, <laughs> I believe that was five. Did he fire five or only four? He fired five. Uh, yeah, it shoots fine, feels great. So, you know, what's the difference? Well, I can point out a couple of things, and if you know any more, let us know what you think, what's your opinion. Now, I'm not here, as you probably know, we don't do much of that. I'm not here to bash you, Birdie, Cimarron, Taylor. I'm not here to bash them. I'm not here, neither am I here to praise the heck out of standard manufacturing and Colt, uh, you know, and put them on a high pedestal thousand miles above these necessarily either I again I've owned both I own both and uh, I so I, I'm, I'm same as you just trying to help figure it out the general consensus if you talk to a hundred people about what the difference is a lot of them will tell you there's there's not a dramatic difference but there's difference in the finish okay and you can probably see the color case hardening on the Colt and the standard manufacturing is gorgeous. It's different, but it's gorgeous. And color case hardening does come out a little differently. Uh, it's not bad on, on this Cimarron. I'll have to say, I've had some Italian made firearms, uh, you know, the Cimarrons and, and the Taylors and others, you birdies that are not this good. Uh, in fact, I think most of them are not quite that good. Some are. So you can tell the difference though, can't you? Uh, I think they probably use a different process. I don't think they do. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you know that they they don't really use that bone and charcoal you know method. I don't think you know that standard manufacturing and Colt and like Turnbull they do it the old fashioned way, and that's why you get such a beautiful color case hardening. And plus they polish the heck out of them after they've done that, and that enhances it. That, that standard manufacturing this is gorgeous uh, that polishing job on that. And you might think that that's way better than the Colt even. Uh, I kind of like the Colt a little bit better. And of course, this one will look like the Colt in a few years, I think. It, it tends to kind of fade a little bit and it changes over the years as you clean it and all that. So I, I like it when it gets to about, about that level, it looks neat. I've even got a second generation that's more faded than that. I like it too. Um, but nice job from the, from the get-go. I have seen some U birdies. Uh, it's just it's, it's pretty pathetic. Uh, where I have commented that I wouldn't even use, I wouldn't even call it color case hardening. I would just go ahead and blue the thing or something or paint it green. You know, it's so such a pathetic attempt at color case hardening. And I think that's a f fairly expensive process to do that right. It takes some expertise, some time, and so that's one of the big differences right there. I think color case hardening. You know the finish, the bluing. You notice the bluing on the standard manufacturer uh, gun is just gorgeous, and and the Colt as well, just just gorgeous. And I really can't 
can't say too much negative about on this uh, this Cimarron. I, I should have my rag here to wipe it down a little bit, but they're they're all really nice. I've got my my sweat rag I haven't used yet. It's not quite as crazy humid and uh, as it is normally here so, this evening. I mean, you see, they all they all look pretty darn pretty darn good. The bluing. So I'm, I'm impressed with that, you know. But so finish is one of the, the differences, okay? Fit, you know, fit and finish. The fit uh, often is not as good on a Uberti or Cimarron Taylor, whoever makes it, or the Italian guys. The fit is, is often, I can feel the ledge there on that. It's nothing that would just bother me, you know. Oh no, I'm not gonna ever buy a gun that's that bad. It's not horrible, it's just a little bit of an edge there. Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, basically, it's a, it's a pretty good job. You know, yeah. You know, whereas these are uh, these are pretty uh, pretty smooth, and all your 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 uh, joints and everything are uh, gosh, that Colt's immaculate. This is one of the recent third generation Colts where they've been doing a really nice job. I don't know how many they're making these days. Uh, apparently, not many, if any. But uh, they did a great job on that. And of course, the standard manufacturing. That, I mean, it's a piece of art, basically. You know, the fit. When you open up the loading gate and, and everything, I mean, it's just, and under, I guess that would fall under fit and finish to some extent. There's something that's it kind of an intangible, you know, uh, people will tell you that uh, the Uberties are, they're not quite as heavy, you know, and talk about fit and finish and all that sort of thing. I weigh these three, there's, there's hardly any difference. The Uberti is just a tad lighter. It's like a, a half an ounce or something. These guns weigh essentially the same thing. They're right at 40 ounces, okay? Uh, but there is, there is some dynamic there, a phenomenon. When you pick one of these others up, they just feel heavier, a little heavier, but I think it has to do with, like when you open that loading gate, I don't know if you can, you can maybe even almost hear the difference. There's just something about them. You know, they, they just... The, they, they just feel a little different, more solid and, and better built. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Now, when you cock the hammer, too, and this will get into the internals, uh, you know what you're going to get with a Colt. C-O-L-T, of all things. Four distinct clicks. Same with the standard manufacturing. C-O-L-T. That action feels like a million bucks on, on both of those. Okay. The Uberti, Cimarron, whatever. And we're not picking on Cimarron, it'd be the same, you know, whoever, uh, whoever's name is on it, okay? Where's that first click? Oop, I guess that was it. Except that's the half notch. Two, three. So you really just have three clicks with this one. I think this one does, I, I have had these that have better actions. We had a new model Uberti here, a stainless one that uh, had a, it was more like a Colt. It sounded like it. So maybe there's some variations. This one, you know, again, we just order these off the shelf, you know, from Buds, uh, request them, you know. This one is rough. It, it, it needs some work. And you can tell, if you see the side of the hammer there, see where it's been scraping? And it's a brand new gun. It wasn't like that when we got it. I mean, that's not like horrible. I, I you know, I've seen that on a Colt and, and on a lot of guns. It's not a deal killer. So moving on back, it sounds pretty good, but it, it, it's just a different, it's not just the sound of it. It's just, you know, I mean, it's supposed to have the same action as a Colt. And you just don't have those distinct ledges on that hammer that are cut uh, as well as on a Colt, if, if I'm describing that correctly. I'm not a gunsmith. Okay, so the internals are one of the differences. If you pr browse around the, uh, the forums like I have done on this topic, and I already knew what, Kind of what people say about these things and, and i saw a lot of discussions from people a lot of opinions about how the internals are different softer metal generally that's one of the common uh, comments you see now how much validity there is there i can't say with 100 percent certainty but generally the the feeling is the consensus is that the italian guns are made with a little bit in more inf a little inferior inferior metal to the American guns, the, at least the Colt and, and the standard uh, manufacturing, and also the the uh, what was it the U.S. firearms, which are not in production anymore. But if you have one of those around, it's, it's more like these. The uh, the metal is just better, better steel, harder steel. Okay, I saw a post where a guy said there there was some test done on a Rockwell 
hardness testing on like the Ubertes and the U.S. firearms and the Colts and and the Ubertes was just softer steel, you know. And he didn't remember the exact numbers, but it obviously he wasn't making this up. And and the, the Colt was harder, a good bit harder, I think. And then the U.S. firearms was the hardest, you know. Of course, you don't want it too hard; it gets brittle. But you get softer steel, generally speaking. If you know differently, let us know. And the internal parts, especially springs and things, are more likely to break, uh, maybe because of that. And just just the hand fitting, you know, the the skilled craftsmanship is it's just not up to Colt level. It's just that simple. Or or other the other one, U.S. Firearms or this other one. You know, I kind of Colt is the generic term there for the more expensive ones made in this country. So, and I'll have to say, in my own experience, people always talk about how with, with these, these Colts or Colt clones, they're great, you know, and you can go compete with them in cowboy action shoots like some people do, and I did for a long time. But you're gonna break springs, you know, because you're using them so much. You know, I never really did. I broke one trigger spring, and it was, it was on a Uberti, of all things, I wasn't even competing with, and I hadn't even honed it that long. Simple to replace, I just popped a new one in there, but, yeah, so I think there is some validity to the internals being softer metal and not as high quality, okay? And, you know, beyond that, internally, you know, and that's a big one, of course, the craftsmanship and, and the, the metal, the metallurgy in, in, in these guns. Now it's 45 Colt or it's 38, so it's not like you're trying to shoot for generally 44 Magnums, you know, or, uh, you know, 10 millimeter out of this stuff, you know, high, high pressures and all that. So you're not gonna blow one up or anything, but, but they're just not the same quality. You can feel the difference. Now, if you've never held a Colt, owned a Colt or any of these others, you may not believe that. You know, I'm just making that up, I'm being a snob. But anybody who has owned both, unless you got your hands on a really bad Colt, one of really terrible quality control, and there were a few years where they, they were down on their quality control. Uh, but it just feels different. The metal feels different. Oh man, I mean, it's, it's night and day. You know, that's the standard manufacturing. And if you pick these up and, and you work them, I mean, there's just no question. No question. Fit, finish, looks, the feel, and uh, there's it, it, a difference. Uh, and this one's worse than most of them, I have to say. But it, but it's, but it works, no big deal. Okay, let me shoot it again to show you. Uh, you know, we've shot these others. You've seen them in the videos. Uh, I'm going to shoot it one more time. Can I do that? Okay. I mean, it's a fine, it's a fine gun. There's a couple. We're not going to shoot maybe every target anyway, but I just wanted to be ready to shoot a little bit here. Let's not let that pot survive. Uh. Or that two liter. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> uh, probably can't hit those, but I'll try. Am I empty? No, now I am. Hey, there I go. Telling myself I can't hit it, and I did. Five shots. So sounds pretty good. So, and actually, this one. Those other two shoot higher to point of aim than this one does. This one is actually closer uh, to point of aim than, than the other two, you know. So, <laughs> uh, and uh, the, the looks of them, there's just not a lot of difference, you know, or the, uh, the you know, the seven and a half inch. They're both, they're both uh, historically, you know, pretty correct, you know, and that, that's the main thing. So, I think there's no doubt, you know, these are better guns, all right. I'll, I'll just go ahead and say that like the U.S. firearms, they're just better guns. Now, how much better? Are they $1,500 better? That's the big question, isn't it? And, and depending on budget, you know, probably not worth it to a great many people. You know, so I think my bottom line is, uh, you know, if, if you want a single action, and it's going to be 15 years or 10 years before you can save up 2000 if you can find, you know, a Colt you want or one of these others, you know, go ahead and get you a Uberti, a Taylor's, a uh, Cimarron, you know, uh, one of these clones out of Italy or other that maybe I'm not aware of. And it, just enjoy the thing, you know, enjoy it. If it breaks too badly, go spend $300 and get some serious gunsmithing done on it. You're still a lot less than that. 
buy two of them <laughs> and you just got half the investment you know and have a backup have two backups you know and then you've got fifteen hundred dollars instead of two thousand i don't know just some rambling and thinking out loud but that's kind of the big difference uh you know the metallurgy the internals the timing maybe uh the amount of hand work that goes into them you know and then the finish um and you know there's a and i'll let you go here in a minute there, there is this thing if you're not aware of it you're not familiar with it with manufacturing making things i remember this years ago i learned this i was shopping for stereos or speakers or something sometimes an item like 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 one some, some of your first impression might be you're thinking yeah that's worth four times as much how's that worth four times as much as this well it's not probably even though the price indicates that yeah, you can make something pretty good, let's say for 500 bucks. And to make it, once you get to a level where it works and it's pretty good, to make it another 10% better often doesn't cost just 10% much more, more money, okay? More investment. Sometimes it takes twice as much to make it even 5% better, you know? To make it 10% better may cost four times as much to do that. You know, so that's one of the dynamics uh, principles of manufacturing and just creating something that you, you're probably already aware of. So it, it's not a, a, a direct you know, proportion, you know, just because something costs four times as much, it's four times as good or twice as good because it's double the money and that sort of thing. Sometimes just to make something, to do a couple little things to tweak something that makes it mm, more desirable, uh, you know, whatever, 10% better, 5%, costs a lot more. You know, just, just, just kind of the nature of things. So, but anyway, my bottom line is uh, the Uberti is, is a pretty good gun. You know, Cimarron, Taylors, we've shot lots of them in rifles, Kiapas, you know, they most, for the most part work, but you can tell the difference. You would be able to tell the difference if you're doing what I'm doing here, side by side, okay? Any Uberti you put on the table is probably not gonna feel as good as these, the Colt or the standard manufacturing or the US firearms. It's just not. Okay, uh, so anyway, I don't know if that helps you. I, I would really like for you to share your experience. If, if you, maybe you've worked for one of these companies, you've built them, or you're a gunsmith. You know, I are a gunsmith too. I've got a Dremel tool and a sledgehammer, but you might be a real gunsmith. So uh, let us know, really, because, uh, you know, a lot of people would like to buy one of these, but they, they feel maybe that uh, you know, these, these U birdies are substandard. I'll just wait for five years so I can afford one of those or something, you know. Maybe you, you give them some, uh, some confidence to go ahead, you know, I don't know. But we know these things are used in movies, are used in uh, cowboy action shooting, and they, they work. So anyway, you know, $500 single action versus 2000 is, is kind of what we're talking about there. What do you get for your money? And that's kind of my best stab at it, you know, you know. So uh, let us know what you think. You probably know a lot more than me, just like everybody else on the planet. Life is good. Hi, welcome to the end of the video. It's good to see you guys here. I want to tell you guys about our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. You can find them at sdi.edu. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can become certified in gunsmithing or get an associate's degree in firearms technology. And they also accept GI Bill. So check them out at sdi.edu. And while you're on the internet, please also check out some of the other stuff we got going on. There's the Hickok 45 and Son YouTube channel. There's the Hickok 45 Facebook. There's the real Hickok 45 on Instagram. There's Hickok 45 on Twitter. I've got John underscore Hickok 45 on Instagram. Um, there is a John Hickok Facebook page. Uh, we have full30.com. There's our website, hickok45.com. We'll keep it simple for you. Uh, you can also find our store. We sell shirts and stuff like that on the website. Uh, there's also links on the main channel page and in the description and all that good stuff. Uh, and, and please be sure to check the descriptions in the, in the videos every now and then because we'll put information in there sometimes uh, that might be useful to you. Who knows? But I appreciate you guys for watching the whole video. I hope that you enjoyed what you saw. I'm sure that you did, and if you didn't, we'll probably hear about it. But I'll see you guys later, and thanks.